Welcome to Mornings with Matt, personal and professional development training that connects the art of acting with critical life skills and self-mastery. Presented by the Deering Acting She's Studio. Perfect. Alrighty, good morning everybody and welcome to Mornings with Matt. I am here this morning with Britt Powell. What an exciting day this is for me. You look gorgeous, as always. Hello, Brent. Thank you. Hi, hi, hi. How are you guys? Man, life is good. I am happy to be alive. We are uh, just having a good time and doing our thing. How are you? I am fabulous. I am always fabulous. But uh, talking with you is even better. I mean, who does <laughs> hey. this at 7 a.m.? How, how amazing is this? Yeah, you know, we, we love this. Um, it was funny how this got started. I, I told Brian, I said, we got to do this at 7. This was a, a, when we first started. And I said, because then we don't have any excuses. You know, like nothing's going get, gonna to get in the way. No one, will, no one will be awake to see it, but, you know. <laughs> but you'll get it done. But we'll get it done, yeah. So eventually when the world comes back to uh, itself and people are driving to work, perhaps. There. That's what I said. You know what? We went back and forth on it. We were like going and that, and finally, I like he convinced me, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, someone could listen to this in the car. Like that would work. <laughs> do people drive in the morning anymore? Uh, I mean, no, not not, right not, now. not now. I mean, people don't do anything anymore. They just they just sit at home. I think. I don't know. There's some city of Phoenix guys working really hard on our streets this morning. I, I walk five miles a day. That's something new that I've started. When did you start this? Uh, three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. And I usually get up at five and walk because, you know, it's 110 by the time the sun comes up. Uh -huh. But when y'all sent me this invitation, like, okay, if I did, if I got up at four this morning. Hey, oh, all right. I got my five miles in, and I tell you, I was not the only person awake. No. That's the shocking part. I get up at three every day. On purpose? Yep. <laughs> yep. But hold on. So how do you feel right now? Because you, you look amazing. You look totally awake and like and excited and ready to crush it. Do you remember those old commercials? Uh, I think it was an army commercial. We do more before 6 a.m. than yeah. people do all day. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah, there you go. That's, That's how I feel. Yes. So you got up at four. There's no complaints. It's not like, oh, I got up at four. It's like, I got up at four. Like, you could be excited uh, about yeah. that. My friends my friends who see my Instagram stories, because I started posting the sunrise because it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I posted city lights this morning because it was 4 a.m. And a couple of my other friends who get up super early, Kieran is always up before dawn. She's like, what is going on with you? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Love this. You know, Brian loves the sunrise, sunset. I'm, and I'm a big fan, too. When I bring my son in, sometimes he'll wake up in the morning with me. And I will always just pause. Whatever we're doing, we go outside. We just sit and watch the sunrise. It's really neat. Well, it's it, it's such a reminder that we are, we're this. So it, tiny. Yeah. We're, we're just, we're, we're not, we are a part of something so much bigger. We're part of this creation that's so glorious and beautiful. And we tend to be too busy to pay attention to it. And I think the last several months, one of the good things that's come out of it is, is people have had to, their daily routines have been totally shaken up. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have really gotten a new appreciation for a lot of simpler things. The sunrise, the beauty of, of the desert, even though it's going to be what, 111 today, mm -hmm. but just, just the beauty that's all around us and the, and, and finding joy and simplicity. I think that's been a really good thing. And I know you're a God-fearing woman, so yes. the the idea of- Go Jesus! Yes, yes yeah, JC, baby. <laughs> you, When you feel small like that, it's a good reminder of how, oh, nice. Um, that says, child of the one true king. I in love Hebrew. that, that's, that's really great. Anyone read Hebrew who's watching this? Yes, it actually says daughter of the king, because in Hebrew there's no non- uh, male female for child so there you go but that yes that's i am i'm i'm definitely a jesus freak how, how long have you had the uh the old tattoo i got this in uh um tel aviv two years ago wow yeah Neat. it was it was on my on my last trip to i've been to israel four times wow and it was on my last trip and i knew i wanted hebrew and hebrew is such a specific language that you really needed to have someone that hebrew is their first language inking it on your skin permanently because who knows what it would say 
<laughs> so I actually, our tour guide, uh, the woman who owns the tour company in um, Israel, I had her write it down. And then when I went to the tattoo parlor in Tel Aviv, I had them write it down. And I'm <laughs> yes, let's do this. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, I haven't even gotten a chance here to talk uh, about how amazing you are. So everyone who's watching who doesn't know who Britt Powell is, she's an entrepreneur, very successful human being, and runs uh, and has been running beauty pageants for how long? How many years Six, now? 16 years. 16 I years. When I was five. It's amazing. And, and, and you won, right? A big, a big uh, state pageant. Did you win nationally? No, I, I won uh, Miss Missouri USA last century, mm -hmm. long, long, long time ago. That's okay. That's incredible. And then you've been helping uh, young women ever since through the pageant world. And I know that that's a, I mean, that's a big deal and I cannot wait to get into that. So we're going to, but that's uh that, that's just a small piece of who you are. Um, <laughs> why don't we start with dog rescuing? Because I, yes. I saw that on your, uh, on your bio and I'm like, I, I want to talk about that. Yes. I've, I, my first dog was, um, uh, from an oops litter, which mo unfortunately most dogs are if the, if the female has a men's spade and she was, Misha was my best, 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 be best friend. And ever since that, um, I knew, and she was a, she was a black lab mix. So mm -hmm. I knew I would always have a female black dog and started rescuing dogs. Um, you know, is unfortunately dogs don't stay with us as long as we would like them to. Right. I think they're too pure for this world. <laughs> um, but I would, I would rescue. And as I started looking for dogs to rescue, I wanted the older dogs. It's so sad how people, oh, I want a puppy. And no, I don't want a puppy. I have scars all over my hands from when Misha was a puppy. Puppies are, no, puppies are a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, looking for senior dogs, dogs that were eight years old and older, because uh, they tend to get overlooked a lot. And they're the best dogs. They seriously have this attitude of, wait a minute, I get to stay here? They're <laughs> feeding me again? I can have that bed or that what? Yes. So they're just so appreciative and they're a lot more my speed. I'm not frenetic puppy kind. And um, so, so how so many, how many dogs do you, what do you have in the house at one time as a dog rescuer? Um, right now I have two. Okay. Um, for the last several years I had three and sadly they all passed away within eight months of each other oh boy. um but right now i have two i have a little uh black pit bull mix named rosie who's terrified of everything she's so cute and unfortunately she um had heartworms so she's undergoing treatment for that right now otherwise she'd be sitting on this bench right behind me looking out the window okay um but i have to keep her kenneled because of the the heartworm treatment and then i have a 12 year old mix he's just a hot mess his name's odie and last year he started as a vacation foster for me i fostered him while his his actual foster was on vacation and we just fell in love and he just he like my home is very quiet i work from home i have dog beds everywhere so i ended up adopting odie so right now i have two that's amazing and so you said foster care this is interesting that you work with desert labrador retriever rescue right yes okay, um yeah. and, and if and if if somebody wanted to get involved in helping out and rescuing dogs maybe foster care would be a good option you want to talk about them a little bit absolutely uh desert labs it's d l r r dot org um or, and, and I think they also own the dot com, but there it's all volunteer. It's a nonprofit. There's so many nonprofit volunteer rescue organizations in addition to the shelters that we have here in Phoenix. Um, but fostering is such a great way to have a dog without all of the responsibilities being squarely placed on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. When you work with a rescue, um, someone else has pulled that dog from the shelter and they just need a home to decompress in. And the shelter, the um, rescue will typically pay for uh, veterinary expenses for that dog. And you as the foster get to bond with the dog, help that, help that poor thing just relax. Cause being in a shelter is stressful. Yeah. So being a, being the foster parent, I get to write the bio online for the dog and I always do it in the from the dog's point of view <laughs> so a potential adopters get a chance to see what a dog's 
truly like a dog in a shelter is usually shut down or they're anxious they're one extreme or the other and sometimes you don't really get to see a dog's true sweet wonderful personality when they're in a home and relaxed and the a potential adopter gets to come visit and see the dog and understand oh, okay this is what this this dog's really like in an actual home environment and then also as the foster i'm one of those people i'll tell you everything that's wrong with the dog because the worst thing is to adopt this dog and have this super perfect idealistic unrealistic view uh -huh. of perfection and then okay wait this dog digs so i had two fosters i called them the crazy boys they were brothers <laughs> that were found running around a golf uh, golf course and they Doug, they ate my designer shoes. I changed their names to Valentino and Louboutin because that's what they ate. <laughs> and, but the potential adopters fell in love with them and I would send pictures. Well, you know, there was a bunny that went under this shrub in my yard. Now look at it. So they knew that, you know, the dogs needed work and that the dogs had high, high energy. And they're one of my favorite adoption stories. I still get Christmas cards from this family. They, they took the dogs to training. They take the dogs everywhere. So it's it's a wonderful thing to foster, find a perfect home, um, and and know that you gave another dog another chance. So if more people would foster, we could really help empty the shelters, help more people get a, a chance to find their perfect companion animal, their best friend, and just hopefully start slowing the cycle of euthanasia in these shelters. Wow, this is a is a great mission, and and to remind everybody how you can get involved, this is Desert Labrador Retriever Rescue. You can go. Uh, yes. to their website and you can try to get involved. So I'm going to put you on the spot here because I think this is going to be oh. really fun. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know I'm a huge supporter of of pageants. We'll get into some of that later. And, yes. um, you know, we love you guys and everything that you stand for. Um, but part of, like, one of the big parts of, of life and, and pageantry and – uh, being a successful human being is knowing how to improvise and and we've worked on some of that together so yes. I want to put you on the spot here really quick um, oh gosh, okay. all right so here we go so you you are an expert I would just say at doing um, puppy descriptions from the or not even puppy dog descriptions from the dog's point of view to help somebody get right, um, right to, uh, picked up so let's let's take Brian here Brian's gonna be our puppy, okay? So, so Brian and Brian doesn't have fingers and toes, all right? Uh, <laughs> but but let's pretend like we rescued him, okay? So we're gonna do a little bio here, and let's pretend I don't know. Let's pretend Brian's single and he needs, <laughs> um, you know, a companion, someone someone to take him in. Uh, how would you how would you describe Brian on on a website where you know from Brian's perspective here that we could tell all the truth? You know, but really, really pin him as someone that maybe could get picked up by a, a new owner. She's really okay, on this the spot. This is Brian as a puppy. Brian as a dog, right? I mean, yeah, but <laughs> but you know what I'm getting at here. Yes, Brian as a puppy and also an eligible bachelor. <laughs> okay, so first person, right? I'm doing uh -huh. this first yep. person? Yeah, yeah. Okay, hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> I am one of the most sincere, amazing people you are, you will ever meet. You'll probably see that, you'll probably notice that when you see me, but when you get to know me, it'll really come shining through. I'm unique and different in the coolest ways, and I have such an amazing overcoming story to tell you if... I like you enough to tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a smile on my face. A lot of things that should have gotten me down in my life have made me an even more joyous person because I find my joy in something greater than me. So I'm always willing to sit down with anybody, have a chat with you, give you all the love and support you get. And if you want to get to know me, you know what? I'm really open to that too. Dang! Yo, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, copy paste. Well, right. yeah. So just just type <laughs> just it out. Copy, put it paste. on the put it on oh, the yeah. Christian dating website, yeah, and you're done. good to go. It's done. Oh, let's not talk about dating websites. <laughs> okay, okay, no, we won't. We won't. We'll, we we we'll, Yeah. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. That's uh -huh. it's a I, tough I, world, I, and you know it's a it's a it's a big. I would imagine it's a huge tough world right now dating uh, with with all the quarantine and COVID and all that stuff. I mean, I, could Im I couldn't imagine the impossibility of that right now. Oh, well, I stopped dating even before this because it's a bleep show. It really, it's it's horrible. It's horrible, horrifying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people should, I, I'll stick to dogs and my business and <laughs> And I'm God, good. and let God do the work because he's going to, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. I, it, you know, I just, I can't, it, it's going to be so funny. I have so many questions for when I get to heaven, but I know <laughs> one of the things I'm going to ask God is, okay, what did you do? 
what was going through your mind, God, when you had this plan for me that was perfect in every way, and I'm like, zing, 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 and complaining that things weren't right in my life. What goes through your head when people do that? Because I know what goes through my head when I see people doing that. I can't imagine the almighty God having this amazing plan and me going, no, nah, uh, you know, I'm going over here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> totally sticking with, with God on this one. It's a, totally up to him. All right, I love that. So you have recently found a besides your love of walking now, um, a you, you've you've rekindled your passion for musical theater. Is that correct? Yes. Oh my gosh, I did I did a musical when I was in college, hundred years ago. Well, last century. I, I can't say hundred years ago, but I really can realistically say last century. Um, I, I was a freshman at the Air Force Academy, and I played Gladys in the Pajama Game. All right, this play came out in the 50s. You were in the Air Force? No, I went to the Air Force Academy. I went for two years and decided I didn't want to be a pilot, and that's really not a – I went to be a pilot, didn't know what I was doing, Um, and I left after two years. But But that's still still amazing. Did you – Did you? is that where you learned a lot of your discipline? May I just ask you that? (laughs) Okay, me and discipline. um, (laughs) You're like, there's a reason I left. Uh, No, yes, and that – yeah, I – Discipline and I have a very interesting relationship. We know each other. We're very familiar with each other. Mm-hmm. We're not always together. <laughs> that makes sense. But you know what? When you when you are together, when the two of you are dating and really you know co- and cohabitating, yes, I, I think it's good for you. And I can tell you right now, you are being disciplined. Getting up at five, deciding to get up at four, not to miss your walk. I mean, for real. And it and it shows. You're you're glowing in in so many ways right now. And I can tell you that I'm like super excited for the direction that you're you're on right now because your well, path thank you. your path thank looks you. bright. I can tell you that. Well, thank you. Uh, but I, I I played I, I actually in high school I was told I couldn't sing. So it, it, be careful, older people, what you tell younger people because yes. we hear people hear it and to, to really take it to heart and it destroyed me in a way. But then at the Air Force Academy, I was ordered by an upperclassman to audition for Cadet Corral, which is their big traveling corral. And the I'll never forget Mr. Edmund Latticer, one of the most godly men I've ever met in my life. And this is really before I knew God. Um, very kind and encouraging. And he said, you really can sing. Made me a first soprano. I'm singing the Messiah. Woo, okay. And then I auditioned for this musical and I get cast as Gladys in the pajama game. And she's the one that sings Steam Heat. Okay. Um, and Hernando's, well, she sings Hernando's Hideaway. Fernando's Fernando's I'm old anyway I loved it and then you know life happens and last it was actually last year right at this time a friend of mine um Lisa Barnes who has started acting and and I saw her uh perform in Chicago at Fountain Hills Theater the year before we were having a girls night and she said Fountain Hills is doing Mamma Mia Brit that's all ABBA songs you have to audition I'm like (laughs) <laughs> yeah, maybe I should. Okay, I've never done this. And here's the thing. Because of what I do for a living, I tell people constantly, it, it, it just because it, it, if you're not chosen, it doesn't mean you're horrible. It just right. means you weren't chosen. Yeah. So mm-hmm. don't put any weight as far as your self-worth into someone else's decision. So I'm like, well, let's practice what we preach. So I, I asked my friend Brandon, who runs a theater in Utah, I'm like, how do I audition for a set? What songs should I do? How do I even find sheet music? My audition was horrible. It was horrible because uh, the... <laughs> God bless him, Jay. I love him now, and he's the music director for the show. He was playing the music that I printed out had three lines, and the bottom line was a drum line, percussion line. He was playing that with his left hand, mm. and he was playing the piano left hand line with his right hand, and I don't know what key I was singing in. <laughs> and I, I'm finally like, look, I don't even know what you're playing. I don't, I'm not sure what's happening, and we tried it again, and Michael, the director, was very stoic and not showing me anything. Mm-hmm. And I walked out, and I'm like, well, I blew that. And then after our group went, um, Megan, the stage manager, said, okay, for callbacks, da, 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 and Brit, I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I went to the callbacks, and I think every female actor, singer in the Valley between the ages of 25 and 55 had been called back for this role. I, I think Michael called 15 or 16 women back for the three roles for mm-hmm. Mamma Mia. And... You guys know me, but I'm one of those people. If I'm in a room full of people, 
I'm like, hi, how are you? I get, you know, I get to know people and I was the only one people didn't know. So most people were really friendly and it was great. And we're learning choreography and that's not my thing. And then we, you know, people were super, super friendly and everyone, I think every individual who wouldn't want to play Donna, right? And here I am, I haven't done theater in 30 years. I'm like, well, what the heck, let's give it a shot. They're either going to love my voice because I have more of a pop voice than I do a musical theater voice, or they're not. And that's fine. There are plenty of super, really amazing, talented people here. And I ended up getting the role out of so many amazing, fabulous, talented, very well-known ballet actresses. So I'm like, well, this is, I like musical theater if this is how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I think, I think Donna sings 11 songs in that musical. And there's this one, this one whole stretch in the second act. And where it, has we, this already gone up? Yeah, we, ha- yeah, we did it in uh, August and September, but um, once, once things kind of settle down where the theater is actually talking about remounting it possibly in the spring. Oh, fun. Um, just because it's so fun. But there was this whole stretch where we we jokingly called it my cabaret because I was on stage for literally four songs in a row. And so we had to figure out how props could get me something, some kind of water in the glass that was on the dressing table out on stage. Anyway, but it was a blast. And I then fell in love with the whole process. I've auditioned for a couple other shows, haven't gotten any callbacks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I love about your story is you... Uh, at, at this particular story. So you're like, okay, I, I love musical theater, but haven't thought about it for a while. Um, d- don't have a great confidence background when it came to, you know, you, you were saying with, with your voice and, and somebody telling you you couldn't sing, this and that, it had been a while. And someone says, hey, you should audition for this. My belief is that God reaches us in so many ways, and one of the ways he reaches us is through other people. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of times we, we ignore it. So somebody is like, and you're like, God, send me a sign. And he's like, dude, I've been telling you <laughs> through like 17 people. Like I just, I already told you. And, and people just don't, they don't put two and two together that like God can work that way. Like he can put the spark in somebody else that can then come over and be like, Hey, th- this is auditioning. I don't know why, but I thought of you. Well, I know why, like God told her to tell you. Right. I mean, it's like kind of right. clear. Right. And that's uh, Matt, those are divine appointments. And 100%. I talk about uh-huh. divine appointments all the time. And that's one of the things I do a, a, my morning devotional. And I, when I pray, I always ask, you know, that, that God speaks through me, that God works through me, that my thoughts, my words, my deeds are honoring and, and glorifying God. And that he opens my eyes to the divine appointments for my day, because you never know who you're going to run into that God's, intending you two to meet and he's going to work through you in some way. Yeah. And one of the ways that I've, that I've experienced this so personally is when I was going through a divorce years ago and I thank you for telling me I look glowing and amazing. I did not look at all like this when I was in the grocery store that day. And I was just, I had a hat on, my skin was all broken out. It was just, it was a bad, bad day. And I passed this woman, we're, we're by the cheese. I remember this so clearly. We're, we're by the cheese and we pass each other and she comes back and she said, I just, you, you have beautiful skin. I just want to tell you that. I, (laughs) (laughs) this poor woman is like, I'm like, no, I'm having the worst day. You have no idea what that means to me. I don't know why we try to talk through that kind of emotion. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and we were just standing there by the processed cheese slices crying. And she's like, I, I walked by and I thought it. And I heard God told me, go back and say it. And so that's such a powerful thing. If, if you think something positive, say it. Because I really think that's a that's a nudging of the Holy Spirit. Anything positive and uplifting and empowering, we think these things all the time. And why not say it? Yeah. What is someone mm-hmm. gonna turn around and say, Who are you, you weirdo? You paid me a compliment. Totally. People don't do that. People are usually a, a little shocked and most of them will thank you. Wow. You know, so yes, divine appointments and, and being open to that kind of encouraging of other people, because it doesn't diminish you at all, at all. It didn't, it didn't diminish Lisa in one bit. She auditioned with me. She didn't get cast as the role she auditioned for because she looks so young for her age. You know, there's, there's her blessing. Um, with that, but it wasn't, it wouldn't have been a good mix visually. And you as a, as a, 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 
who you direct and you cast all the time. You understand mm -hmm. that talent has a lot to do with it, but it's also a visual thing. So Lisa understood that, you know, it, I would have loved to have played with her, uh, played the roles with her, but you know what? She still came and supported me. And th that's what's, that's the super cool thing about a true, genuine friendship. Yeah. And okay. So one of the things I do on the show, I like to end with some sort of a challenge for people. And, and, and maybe now that you mention it, maybe this is divine appointment. Cause I actually, I, I kind of ask and I listen, so I have a divine appointment for you, but we're going to get to that later. It just, like it, oh, hit, yeah. it hit me just now and I'm like, Whoa. okay, all right, cool. We're going to have, to, <laughs> I'm going to have to share Whoa. that. I'm going to have to share hey, that thing. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I'm, we are going to talk about pageants. I promise. I think everybody's like, when are they going to talk about pageants? Cause like, I want to, I want to talk about pageants. She's the expert in pageants. Before we do that. You have an online course, or you, you're developing one that's going to launch in July, and yes. I'm very excited to know what this is and and how we can get information on on getting into this course. I'm so excited about this, and Kent, Matt, I can tell you this is super scary for me to say this in public that I'm launching it in July, um, because that means I have to launch it yep. in July. Yeah. Um, so this it's is going to be July 31st <laughs> and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now. <laughs> So I, I've been I've been running pageants for 16 years. I participated in pageants since I was 23, and the questions I always get: What are the judges looking for? How do I do this? Do I need experience? Do I need a coach? Do I need someone telling me what to do? How do I choose my wardrobe? And honestly, for 16 years, I've heard myself say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again to mm -hmm. my contestants. And I I went to a um, a seminar, Brendan Burchard seminar. Um, in October and it hit me, you know, divine appointment. I, I always tell God, I don't do subtlety. Well, you got to hit me upside the, the head with a two by four. Well, I was getting beat out by the two by four at this conference because it's all about present how to, how to present your, your message and what you want to teach people. Um, and the interesting thing is I went to this conference by myself, 2000 people. And all of a sudden I'm standing in line to get in and I hear Brit. Well, it was a woman that I was at Mrs. America with in 2004. Hadn't wow. seen her since 2004. She recognized me because I'm a little conspicuous. And we went through the program together and we had lunches and dinners together. And I, I was sitting there and I said, what, I, what should my course be? And she literally hit my hand and said, pageant. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> pageant. And I said, but I want to do something broader than that. She's like, you're an expert in this and, and this is pageants. what you do and i've been wanting to reach people i mean i direct the arizona pageant and i i, I directly impact young women in arizona 100%. but what i have to say works for any pageant system it's not just the miss usa or miss teen usa because i focus on the mental aspect of putting yourself out there yeah and and knowing your why and so the course is going to be five one hour courses online and you know the online course industry you know, as we're doing this online uh -huh. it's 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 burgeoning it's one of the people want to learn at their own pace so these this course will be designed for anybody from any age interested in doing a pageant how to win it regardless of the outcome because love that one thing you have to understand is when you put yourself in a subjective situation, if I go to an audition, if I'm auditioning for you, Matt, and I'm like, okay, well, Matt knows me. So if he thinks that I'm going to be great for this role, he'll put me in it. But if I'm not going to make the client happy, he's not going to cast me. Right. And that doesn't diminish my, my opinion of myself as an actor, unless I totally blow it. And then that's on me. But when you do a pageant, there's so many things you can't control. And the first one is the outcome. Yeah. yeah. You cannot control the judges. You cannot control someone opinion of you given a two minute total time period on stage and two and a half minutes in an interview so i encourage every single one of my contestants to have a goal other than placing or winning again because that's up to the judges over which they have total control so having that kind of mental space of what why am i doing this yeah. what is my why yes want to win absolutely but know what you will personally get out of this and the growth that you want out of this that you can directly affect. And that is your success. And if you go in with the right mental attitude and you are authentic and you present yourself in a way that you're very proud of. So you mentioned me being at Miss USA. I did not win. I placed in the top 12 and I knew I was going to win because I was amazing, right? <laughs> but when they started announcing the top six, they cut from a 12 to a six and that the first three girls, 
it just clicked in my head, I'm not advancing because I'm nothing like these women. And that's nothing bad about the women who were advancing, but yeah. the judges collectively were going a direction that didn't include me. And I was totally fine with that because I was me. I presented myself in a way that to this day I'm proud of. And that's what I want young women to understand when they're, when they're putting themselves out there, when they're allowing themselves to be judged, that they cannot allow an outcome to impact what the experience meant for them. So if you have a goal, if you have the right mental space, if you have uh, what's in it for me other than the outcome and you work towards that impact it, make it happen for you, then you really have won and you can truly be happy for the person who gets the crown at the end of the night. Yeah. And if you're the one who gets the crown at the end of the night and you are authentic and kind and empowering and encouraging to everyone else, then everyone's happy for you as well. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's what I, I want to get this out for young women because I see so many people making mistakes so much. Well, one, uh, the last girl was blonde. Do I need to color my hair blonde? Right. Yeah. Who says these things? Yeah, Why do yeah. you even think that? Past does not dictate future. So I'm going to jump in here because I know this is a this is a big part of what I help you with too when we work together mm -hmm. on the pageants and whatnot is their is their mindset, the way that they yes. they speak and present yes. themselves, which has so much to do with with thought life and you know it has to do with what's going on, on the inside is what shows on the outside, 100. percent And so um, this is this is why we're involved. It's why I believe in what you do so much because you're you're changing lives you're giving the opportunity for people to change their own lives really but it all it's the same thing as like you're saying with acting um i, I wrote a book acting is my day job and the whole point of the book is is not to land gigs the whole point of the book is to organize your life and set different types of goals goals that are going to be empowering to you so like you said when i come into an audition i have one goal and one goal only i want to leave a better actor than i came in period that's it. And the truth is I have landed jobs before when I didn't give my best in the audition. That's a loss for me. That, uh. that goes in the L column. Even though I, I landed the gig, I know I didn't do my best to prep. Mm -hmm. That's an L. Mm -hmm. And I want people to think that way because now, now I've got myself logist, uh, literally in a, in a state where the agent will call and be like, hey, you got the, you got the, you know, the commercial. And I'll go, which one? Because I literally don't care. I've, I've let it go. I auditioned and I'm like, cool. Like I, that's, that's beyond and past. I'm already on to the next thing. Nobody else gets to define me. So I'm not sitting here thinking, are they going to call? Like what, what, you know, I've, I've released the outcome is what you're saying. And it's amazing. Yes. So going back to, to what you said earlier too, and I, and I love this, I, I've got this passion for personal development, passion for helping people better themselves, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, and we've leaned way into it. But the truth is, all I'm doing is speaking the truth the same way you are. It's the same truth. God is love. Truth is truth. This, this, is, what, this is what it is. Acting is my unique niche. It's my mm -hmm. unique angle mm -hmm. to speak the truth from. And so mm -hmm. pageantry is yours. It, it really is. So and you can inspire the world at a huge level. And I'm talking guys too can be inspired by the the pageant world if they really understood what it is i i can tell you like literally and that's i was going to jump in with this <clears throat> you do this like you create a culture there that I, i'm so excited for you to scale out because i've i've been inspired by it by watching the way that you handle the girls and handle every seriously like i because the we went and did the video with you like way mm -hmm. back when and i got to know a lot of those people a lot of those girls and they could not stop talking about how you help build their self confidence and and just it wasn't uh -huh. about the pageant and a lot of them had done it multiple times. I mean, it wasn't just like one and done. They were like, they loved it because they loved being around the people and and the mm -hmm. culture that was created. And, and speaking of that, um, I, I assume we're going to be putting up a pageant soon when when COVID allows us to. Yeah. Right now, we're still scheduled for the very first week of January, January first through third. Um, so, you know, I'm Brandon, my production manager. We're celebrating New Year's Eve here together. Yay, love you. <laughs> awesome. So, so, so Brian brings up a good point here. He was talking about some of the girls that had, had done it multiple times. Yeah. Have, have, are you familiar with the Deshauna Parker speech? I think she, I think, I think I'm getting the name right. I hope. Um, uh, pageant winner. Former Miss USA. Former Miss USA. Is that what I'm supposed to say? 
Shauna. Well, no, she's. It's like there, there's a correct way of saying it. You gotta do it right. You gotta say it right. Kiss it up. Anyway, it 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 took her like seven tries at the state to win the mm-hmm. state, and then she went and won national. And it, you know what was interesting is her why changed. So on the seventh one, she had this coach, this coach, and this coach died of cancer. And so she had kept trying and trying and trying, and then she went back the seventh time and she won. But she was also, I think, the first um, military uh, mm-hmm. person active, yes. to win, active yes, duty to win. And it was like, like whoa, like that's such a great, unbelievable, inspiring story. And now she's on a big stage giving a keynote talking about this, and it came from the pageant. But, mm-hmm. it, but was it the pageant? No, it was her perseverance. It's the fact that she failed six times that gives her a platform to speak from. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that, that comes back to she like, failed, I would not say she failed six times. I would say she learned six times. Sure. And, and, and there's, a, there's like a you know, way you, you, you phrase it. So because um, right. I agree with you on the one hand, on the other hand, I've just changed. I've, I've transmuted the word failure. So to me, fa- a fail is a success. You know, it, you're allowed to fail. You're just not allowed to quit. That's that's my oh, my I point love of view. It. And yes. if and if you and if you're not failing, then you're not growing. And if you're not growing, you're not happy. Period. So you know, I would mm-hmm. consider a fail is like okay, I, I'm walking, a, I'm trying to f- learn how to walk as a kid, and I trip and I fall. It's fail. Okay, I failed. Great. Get up. Try again. Get up. Try again. We're not gonna we're yeah. not gonna quit though, right? Well, so, one of my former title holders, Nicole Smith, she competed for seven years. I remember Nicole. And She's Nicole so great. Nicole is so great. Yeah. Yes. And I saw Nicole go from this person who was trying to win. Yeah. She was trying to be what she thought a winner would be. And we had a sit down one day. She said, what can I do better? What can I do to be better? And I actually said, take a year off. You need to figure out who you are. What do you want out of life? What 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 are you doing for your life? Yeah. And let's pretend pageants don't exist. What are you doing for you? And if you can continue doing that and do the pageant, okay, but take a year off and figure out who you are. She didn't. She doubled down and, and did everything she thought she needed to do. And that was the first year she didn't make top five. Hmm. And so the following year, she took it off. She developed her makeup artistry business. She really worked on Nicole and came back the following year and was relaxed because she had a better sense of her why. And she knew that this pageant, winning a pageant wasn't going to change her life and to propel her into things that she had already taken the action necessary to get to the next level. So she was much more relaxed, which when you're a judge and you see someone really wanting it so bad, it kind of, it's difficult to really fall in love with someone who's that Mm. intense. And so she was really relaxed and the judges fell in love with her and she had the best year, made every appearance she possibly could because she knew why she had done the pageant. Mm. So honestly, it's, it's this, and and so many success stories of young women doing their state pageant before they win, and then they then they go on to win Miss USA, and then there are also those girls who just happen to show up and win, and oh my gosh! So the, you know you don't have to prepare, prepare, prepare. Well, and and my thought there You've is is be ready, ready, ready. Yeah, my thought is those girls had been preparing, just not in the pageant world. So, it's, right. you know, they're gaining their confidence in other areas, right. whether it be fitness or dance or whatever they're doing, they, right. they've gained confidence. And mm-hmm. so people are like, oh, they just showed up and they won. No, they didn't. Like they've been working their no. whole life at different things, developing themselves. And then they jump into pageantry and a lot of things translated. That's right. That's probably you know, what happens. One of the happens. things I, I ask my contestants all the time when I have them in orientation or in a big group, I'm like, shout out who you think the best looking guy is in the world right and they're now. They're like Matt Deering. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the name. And I'll let you know if I hear that one. <laughs> Only if Leanne's I mean, in the room. I'll tell you with uh, the description you gave me, possibly that could happen. <laughs> But honestly, it's different opinions. Yeah. And it's not that that you can say, well, this guy isn't good looking at all. It's like, well, I prefer this over this. And that's how life is. We all have preferences. In dating, we have preferences. I prefer tall men. And that wipes out a lot of the population. But that's my preference. And it doesn't mean that people who aren't tall or horrible people and I wouldn't like them. That just means initially that's my preference. And so when you look at uh, when you're doing a pageant or, or when you're auditioning for something, 
not everyone's going to like you because you might not fit their conscious or subconscious preferences. Yeah. And, you know, you might remind a judge of the waitress who spilled coffee on them that morning and they just don't know why they're not. And it's, and it's not always a situation of a judge doesn't like you. It's that they're interested in someone else. Someone else catches their eye. And that's, that's something you cannot ever put your finger on and you i i'm so sick of their pageant coaches out there saying I'll, I'll tell you how to win i'll tell you how to win there is no secret formula there is no a plus b equals a win so unless yeah. unless your win is redefined true how, 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 how you win how you true. win whether you win or not right. and right? that's that's what i'm working on yeah. it's like okay what can you impact you know when i was going through a divorce i went through that divorces are, are sad and horrifying mine was the best thing that ever happened to me on all sorts of levels but one of the best things that happened was my relationship with god just got so much stronger i went through this whole program um where I had to just show everything to God, reveal everything that was in my heart. Uh, first of all, recognize all sorts of things and then just put them out there. It's kind of like sweeping up your big pile of junk, putting your neon sign on and go, hey, this is mine. Hi. Yeah. Wow. And then cleaning it up. And part of that was it, it, it's accountability and it's understanding unconditional love, but taking accountability. And I had to go, I, I had to apologize to people that I, hadn't treated well like maybe i hadn't shown my appreciation and it was amazing how much that flowed back to me because the intention is just to show your appreciation show your love without expectation right, right. that's that's unconditional love is just to do what's right without expecting anything in return and the tidal wave of love that came back to me from that mm. oh my gosh it just made me want to keep going and keep going and it also god just put this image in my mind with pageants when it comes to people most most women oh my gosh social media i'm so glad i did pageants before social media yeah. i i can't imagine the pressure these young women feel to be edited and perfect and how many likes and oh my god oh, it's it's exhausting but you know when you have a you have a candle and this candle's lit and it goes to light an unlit candle there's that moment where that that flame is just a little bit bigger right when the two weeks meet it's just a little bit bigger and then both candles are lit this first candle is not dimmer they both have the same light but it's that magic when one reaches out to light another that's the magic that you feel when you encourage someone else when yeah. you love someone else when you do something for someone else not expecting any recognition for it whatsoever, doing it for no reason other than that's the right thing to do. And so I work very hard and my staff works very hard in the pageant to make sure that those are the moments that our young women are, are becoming cognizant of it. And, and you, you, you start chasing it. It does make you feel good by design yeah. when you love other people and Along with that, one of the things I'm very passionate about is, and I'm I'm guilty of this myself, what do we say to ourselves? So when you get up and you look in the mirror and you two are perfect and guys don't probably even go through this, I'm kidding. <laughs> if, 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 if you could have a Bluetooth speaker playing what you say in your head to yourself, it, you okay, no, 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 turn that off. And you certainly wouldn't like, oh my gosh, if my hair would just, and if I didn't have these gray roots, and oh my gosh, if I could just lose weight, I'd be amazing. I would never say that to my best friend. Mm -hmm. So why am I saying it to myself? Yeah. Ouch. So, you know, this, yeah, I produce an amazing event on a big stage with a lot of glamour and a lot of fun. And whoever wins, coolest one year intern, unpaid internship you'll ever have in your life. But it's not about that it's about learning who you are what you want at, I, I ask it i ask this question all the time why so what your actions have to have intention and your actions especially if it's something that you're choosing to do matt as you said need to be something that you will learn and grow from otherwise why do it yeah if so you just if you just want a crown and to be told you're pretty, go buy a crown. And, <laughs> and ask your dad if you're pretty. You're pretty. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs>
<laughs> so, so I already know my opinion on this, but what type of young woman should be thinking about coming and 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 taking the initial um, workshop and initial initiation to see if this might be for her? Any young woman who's in our eligibility, 14 to 27, U.S. citizen, not married, never married, not pregnant, no kids, um, and, a, and a resident of Arizona. And here's why. I, I, I've lived this my life. I, I'm one of those people, I'm 50 years old. I don't want these 20 somethings to get to my age and look back and say, oh my gosh, why didn't I do something like this? Yeah. If you wait until you think that other people will think you're ready to try something, you miss out on life. Yeah. You miss out on all the magic. You miss out on all the opportunities. But when you take a chance, and you put yourself out there, even just to say, you know what, I'm gonna try this pageant, I'm gonna do it. And then you get into this group of women who are so encouraging and want to get to know you. And I want to get to know all the contestants and my staff does too. And we do events that, you know, when, when things are, it's a little bit safer for us to do group events. We do fun stuff, we do volunteer work. It honestly, if you, have an inkling in your head that this might be something kind of fun that's when you should do it well that's god talking to you that's that's that divine intervention and it's coming from somewhere if it's tickling mm -hmm. your heart tickling your brain it's, something's mm -hmm. in there talking to you yes and i and i believe what you believe it's it's anybody it's all shapes sizes colors yes. everybody yes and and if it's like if you have a why that is i want to do this to find out what it will what 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 I'm gonna become because of it, how I can change, how I can better myself. Um, and like like you said, okay, we just said out loud by the end of July we're gonna have a a, a course. Okay. Scary. Cool. But now it's out there and it's yeah, like I cool. Got a lot of work to do, you but... got a lot of work to do, right? And who knows, maybe we'll help you. But you're gonna be at this place where you're like, okay, I'm gonna um now I'm gonna do this thing. And whatever whatever the outcome, it kinda doesn't matter because you can always get better on the next one and better on the next right. one and better on the next you, one. I can always redo it. If I record my my classes and I get them out there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much I can say. Well, guess what? I can re-record them. You don't have to wait until you're perfect to try. Right. Because right. let me tell you, you will never be perfect. There is never any arriving in this world. It's a journey from start from birth to death. You do not arrive. Yeah. You keep growing and you keep trying and you do different things, but don't wait until you think you're ready because you okay, I'm sorry. Did someone appoint you as the as the judge for all this? Well, now I'm ready to do the pageant. Well, okay. But what do you mean by that? Are you, do you feel that you should win this year? I mean, one of the things I hear a lot is I, young teenage girls. So the, the age limit is 18 for our teen division. And I hear from moms and from teens, well, she's gonna do these other smaller pageants until she's really ready for the big stage. I'm like, so you're going to walk away from years of eligibility and opportunity until you think you can just waltz right in and win it. Oh, okay, I'm, I, I run this thing. I'm telling you that doesn't make sense. I have yeah. girls show up and, and run away with it. You you can, you cannot determine when it's your time. Well, and also a, a, it time. also goes back to our why. If, if sometimes I mean, and maybe who knows? Sometimes that could be good. But but the idea being this, I if your why is because I want to do a smaller thing just so that I win. Yes. So that I get the so I get the prize. It's like, well, you know, go you, buy one, go yeah, buy a crown. You right. can get them anywhere. It's the wrong. It's the wrong reason. Hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, and okay. and I would I would say even like let's let's take the girl out there who maybe is not the perfect um, shape size, um, and and if there's an inkling in her, who knows? Like this could be the catalyst for her to change her whole life and 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 it, it becomes something that she gains confidence from. And placing, crowning, none of that matters, but she may be on this new path for health and path for success and confidence that, that you, she couldn't have got otherwise. A, a perfect example. I hear this all the time. 
Uh, a few years ago, I had a young woman. So I always, I always uh, address the contestants before the final pageant starts on Sunday and ask them if they completed their goal and, and let them know that you've won. You, you've already won. If you completed your goal, yes, the rest of this is just glamour and fun and it's easy. Um, and I had a young woman approach me and she said that her why for doing the pageant was to keep herself on track so she could, I don't even know if this isn't the right word because I don't think you can get over, but she needed to work through an eating disorder. Okay. And she mm -hmm. was working with a psychiatrist on this and she wanted to do the pageant. And the psychiatrist said, I won't, you can't do the pageant unless you, uh, until you get through the program enough where I feel that you're emotionally capable of handling it. So she did, she worked very hard, got her psychiatrist okay. And she came up to me and she said, my, my goal for this pageant was to be happy with my body, regardless what my weight was. And she, she said, I was so proud of how I looked in swimsuit, even though the old me would have been disgusted, the new me knew how hard I worked on that body and I'm very proud of myself. And this woman, she didn't make the semifinals, but we award um, high scores and for girls who don't make the semifinals. She got the award for swimsuit. Mm. And it, and I, I knew she was getting this because I, you know, our auditors had already told me this. And so she's telling me the story. And I knew that in four hours, she was going to get recognized in public for that hard work and that's you know that that ripple effect the things that i may not even hear about i've gotten e i've gotten emails from girls years after they've competed saying something you told me stuck in my head and it just stuck in my head and stuck in my head and when i wanted this promotion i heard your voice and i went for it and i just got this promotion i'm like I got to be careful what I say. <laughs> People listen, but it's true. There, there's so much that can happen. Only one person wins a pageant, only one, but everybody can get something out of this environment. And it is overwhelmingly what I hear is self-confidence, getting to meet other women, feeling better about who you are in the moment. And that's the most important thing. If you hide yourself, if you hide your light because you don't feel that the public or people will like you, and, and I've been guilty of this. It wasn't until last year that I would actually post full body pictures of myself because I've, I, I'm, I'm overweight. Okay, so what? Do people not like me? because I'm overweight? Well, I wouldn't know because I'm not friends with those people. But my my friends know who I am, they see me, and why wouldn't I post who I truly am on Instagram? Because the people who follow me are actually my friends. And I had to break through that and, and say, oh, okay, here we are, ta-da, here's me in a swimsuit on my 50th birthday. Yeah. And guess what? Nobody said anything negative to me. It's It was all up here. I was holding myself back. And if I'm doing this at 50, I know, yeah, I know young girls are doing this in their teens. And I want to give them an opportunity to feel the power of trying. Because even if, like Matt, as you said, even if you fail, if you're trying you feel like a rock star yeah. and that's amazing. So, so um, we're, we're getting here toward the end. This has been an amazing show and, and people can obviously <laughs> tell why we love you and why we sponsor you and why we believe in. And you guys are pageants. so amazing. Well, thank you. But we, we are just, we're huge fans. Um, you had a question for me about acting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because I'm 50 uh -huh. and I started doing this and I haven't, you know, I'm like, I need to start doing some classes, Matt, mm -hmm. teach me how to audition, help me learn how to do this because it's one thing for me to teach other people, but it's another thing for me to learn. So what advice do you have for someone? And it's not just at my age, but at any age who's thinking, I want to, I want to be a movie star. Or I want to be in acting. What, what advice do you have for me? Because I'm all about this learning thing now. <laughs> yeah, well, that that I mean, you already hit it on the head. The first thing is, I would say, stop saying I want to be a movie star and just release <laughs> release that right. goal, um, right. because because it's sort of like the outcome. Who cares? You're a movie right. star. Get good, great, good for you. Then what? 
you know, you're either if you're not growing it once you're a movie star, then you're still dying. Like it doesn't matter. So right. um, set the right goals, get excited and get excited about learning. Understand that it's a never ending process there. Think about I always tell people they're like, well, what, uh, where, where do I start? I'm like, read a play. Oh, which play do I read? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, OK, let's start here. How about you go back and you and you just you just start with all the Tony winners that ever were written you'll never finish if you finish oh. if you get there great Re read the, the three that didn't win that were the runner-ups i guarantee you they're, they're those are amazing plays you're going to learn something from and that's the very beginning then you then you can read all the acting books i mean i mean there, there's so much of it out there i wrote one step by step how to be successful how to make money how to market yourself um and really how to win the acting game by releasing the results i mean that's really what it is that, that's where can i buy that book are you on amazon where i'm on amazon book? yep i'm on i'm on, I, I just found out we're, we're in walmart brad guy we're in walmart yeah <laughs> wow. wow i know i was looking at my uh my kdp that's the the amazon author thing and i we had two sales from something that i didn't recognize i'm like this is weird what is this and it's some like distribution thing and and i'm like who's selling the book i don't even know who's selling the book <laughs> And then like Walmart's got it on. I'm like, okay, all right, we'll take That's that. That's amazing. Yeah. So you know, Amazon, Walmart. I don't know. Maybe they're the same company these days. That they're all. <laughs> right. They're I'm all say that like eight times this week at least. Like, guys, we're in Walmart. Walmart. Walmart, Walmart. You know. <laughs> you can get Walmart. you can get duct tape, underwear, and acting is my day job. That's right. <laughs> it's uh, it's the it's the place that has everything. So, um, so so there's that. You know, um, just become a lifelong learner. I mean, for anybody. Mm -hmm. And and I think you're already, in a lot of ways, winning the game. And I'm going to tell you because you wrote down here you're 50. You've said you're 50 like four or five times. Yes. Here's the deal. you got to be 50. And I, what's the first thing I said? You look gorgeous. I mean, you really do. And, I, you know, and I've seen I've seen you, different versions of you, in the same way you've seen different versions of me. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I was I was a good 15, 20 pounds heavier, but it was heavier up here. It was heavier like like I hadn't turned to the Lord really. You know, that was the big wake up for me was February 2nd, 2018, the day I woke up. That's when I really, really came to God for real, for real. And, wow. it, and it changed everything. That's a whole nother episode that we can't even get into, but it's like it's a big deal, you know? And so, um, so, so you're already winning the game by just being 50 and owning it. And, and if we go into social media and we talk about like, you, you gotta have a brand, you know, it's in the book. I say, Hey, you gotta mm -hmm. have a brand. Okay, cool. But your brand, I think everyone's brand should be their journey. So if you didn't post the pictures of you full body a year ago, then you don't get to post the picture now. That's that's you know, you've been walking for five miles for however long, you know, or you don't get to post the picture two years from now. And it's not about like looking better. It's about showing the journey and being like, hey, I feel better. I feel more connected. Like, and you're not even showing off your body. You're just going like, guys, I'm on a journey right now and I'm proud of where I'm at. And people respect that, you know, like and, and even coming back to the authenticity is yeah, authenticity is the big connector. It's Being everything perfect is not a connector. Authenticity right. Is. right. Like it, this goes I, I go all the way back. I love the analogy here of you writing these bios for the dogs <laughs> because because I believe in this so much. Brian knows about uh, the way I feel about accountability, authenticity. I mean, I'm like obsessed with it. And it, and it really drives me nuts when somebody's not, especially when I know them, like Brian. Like, if anybody says something that I know is not authentic, even like one tiny little thing, I'm going, why are you lying to me? Why are you lying to yourself? Like, it's so annoying. Mm -hmm. I, I get really frustrated. I'm, I'm yeah. totally, lying is, is one of the most useless things in the world. Totally. And so, People so, see through you. So we, go, so we go and we go, hey, here's the deal. If, if we're not being accountable for us, and we don't and we don't say, hey, by the way, I chew expensive shoes. And by the way, I dig, but I'm working on it. But I'm working right. on it, period. If I try to pretend like I'm something I'm not, then then when you find me out, it's like, oh, that's ugly. But if I already knew you chewed shoes and I already knew you dig, but then all of a sudden, like, hey, you're not chewing shoes as much anymore. Or hey, you don't do that. Wow. Now I can celebrate you uh -huh. for yeah. something small like that, but it's only because you brought dark to the light. So, so you are, you are saying like, Hey, I'm 50, I'm owning it. I'm the best 50 year old that I can possibly be right now today. 
tomorrow I'm going to try again to do the, to do that. And then next year I'm going to go, I'm going to celebrate 51 and go, I'm 51, everybody check it out. And I love right. life at 51. And if you can keep doing that, not only will you land tons of acting gigs cause you will, as long as you're training and studying and figuring out how to get better at acting. Um, but you're going to inspire so many girls too, just because you're, you're like, you're an example. I, I think of what the pageant should be, which is just somebody owning themselves and being confident with right where they are. Right. Thank you. And honestly being, I, I, I'm a plus size model with Ford here. And I was just a couple months ago added to the acting board and I, it, I'm, I'm a size 12, 14 right now. And I'm in an image industry and I can't shrink back and try to tell young women to try, be amazing, be who you are, be happy with you are who with who you are in this moment. If I'm not, I can't be down on myself and right. I also can't stay the same and have any kind of authenticity or have any any idea that I should be able to help young women along their journey. As you said, if I'm not moving somewhere then where is my authenticity so i got a quick funny funny story for you um and yeah. I, I think this one's in the book actually but but this is uh and i'm gonna buy on amazon or at walmart or walmart yeah walmart. What's it called again? <laughs> <laughs> acting is my day job acting is my day job so so here this goes back to goals right and it goes back to you you saying the um setting the right goals so mm -hmm. i had this i was i've always uh, struggled with my weight just just my physicality and the truth is my biggest issue was I was always good enough. I didn't really have to work that hard to be just, just to be average and be like, okay, pretty good looking, like cool. So I, I knew I never reached my own potential. And that was very frustrating to me always. I'm like, I know I could be better. And I just wasn't. So I would set these like arbitrary goals all the time. And I would like go to the gym for a long time. And then I would quit and over and over. Well, w one time I set this goal and I got my vision board and everything. And I was like, all right, I, I want to be... I want to model with my shirt off. That's a goal I'm going to set. Okay. I'm not going to have that goal ever, by the way. <laughs> well, it's a bad goal. So that's good. So, so that was my goal. And all of a sudden I'm working out again and then I've been eating right. And then I'd not and back and forth and, and I don't feel great. And Leanne and I auditioned for something for, uh, Phoenix college. And you know, my wife's gorgeous and, uh, we get, and we get it <laughs> probably because of her. And, uh, and so we're, we're on the gig. Well, guess what? They, they're like, okay, great. Now we're going to need you guys in, in your bathing suits. And I'm like, cool. Um, and, and literally I, I had a modeling gig with my shirt off, but I wasn't proud of my body. I didn't feel good. So I got my goal, my arbitrary goal. And yet it wasn't what I wanted. Not really. So I had set the wrong thing in motion put it out there to the universe, got exactly what I thought I wanted. And I was very unhappy, embarrassed, et cetera. The director's like, why don't you go in the water and kind of lower yourself to your chin? <laughs> we'll follow the camera. We'll follow your wife with the camera and we'll watch her, you know, come down to you. I'm like, I, I know what you're doing, pal. <laughs> yes, I will hide my belly. Okay. Um, but, but it just comes back to that idea of like being who you are, but knowing your why, if your why is not strong and not correct, and not something that empowers you, then it, it, it's going to be hollow at the other end of it anyway. Right. I'd say I'd say a girl with the wrong why who won the pageant can be very unhappy. And it's happened, and she always is, because I push for authenticity. Yeah. And honestly, I want someone to be who they are and to get better at who they are and work through the year to be a better person when they turn over the crown to the next girl. It's not about winning and going to Miss USA. That's 10 days out of the girl's life and odds are against her. Miss USA is not, it's not the same kind of pageant as a state pageant because at, at my pageant, I don't ask the judges for who's perfect tonight, who's the best tonight, it all ends tonight. I want the girl who's going to be the best representative for the entire year, mm -hmm. which means she doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. She has to have that, that special it factor. But so if someone 
does things that aren't authentic to and and they end up winning because you know maybe they fooled the judges or you know whatever they were supposed to win because i needed you know some trouble in my life i don't know (laughs) i mean honestly if you're inauthentic to get your goal and then you reach your goal and it's not what you expected it to be well that's kind of on you because you didn't understand and listen to what really this is all about so yeah and if, if we go back to like growth and development i always i like to talk about you know, you, you get so excited, you graduate eighth grade, and then what happens? You end up as a freshman, and That's you're it. and it's like, Ugh. and then you graduate high school, and what happens? And you're like, Ugh. then you graduate college, and it's like. Uh, I can't even get a job, you know, and it's like, right. you know, that's life. And so you never arrive. Right. If your goal is a rival, you're going to be frustrated your entire life. And you should always be setting the next goal. That way, whenever you do achieve the goal, you, you've, you've already got your eyes set on the next thing anyway. If you, if you think about Mount Everest, which I would never climb, by the way, woohoo, crazy people. But <laughs> do they just start going? Right. Until they hit the top? No. There are so many other mountains. First of all, you have to climb first. And then there are levels, and you have to sit at base camp for how long to acclimatize? Right. What do they do at base camp? Do people just sit in their tents and go, I can't wait for the top, can't wait? No. They're experiencing their environment. So, yes, your goal should be another base camp. And even once they hit the summit and they're allowed to stay, what, a total of three minutes? And then they have a journey down and they stay at different levels on the next leg of their journey and acclimatize to their environment. So people can't approach anything, but in in my world, you can't approach doing a pageant as Everest and I'm gonna hit the top, I'm going for the top, I'm going for the peak, going for the summit, going for the summit. You have to look at it as there's so many things along the way that I get to enjoy, that I get to learn. Once I hit a certain goal, I wanna live in this moment for a minute. Yeah. And, and that's so attractive and that's there. and that's what that's when people do land acting gigs because because it's it's not it's not the 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 lead role in a, in a Hollywood film but it's little it's little victories along the way that do happen and you you do you want to stop and appreciate that moment for a second mm-hmm. but then don't don't talk about it like it's like it is something that it's not just right. enjoy that moment and realize that there's going to be another mountain i mean i i love even that you 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 proudly stand on your mountain and go i'm a plus size model right now well cool that's great then what happens what happens if you keep walking okay now let's let's say you become like the hottest um plus size model that ever existed and then and then all of a sudden they're gonna go sorry like you don't get to be in this category anymore yeah you're you're too you you're now you're down in the now you're the down right in the size. now you're down in the regular model category and you start over you start the mountain over great that's it. Awesome. That's all. And right. If that means I can't get modeling jobs. That's okay too. Because but, that's no, but not you, my but you, you will because it's about confidence. That's the thing. Like that, that it factor I think is confidence. You know, I've worked with, I, I worked with a girl named uh, Sophia Wiley, who's a big Disney star, and um, and so like she came in and and her story is interesting because she was a dancer and kind of got through acting really quickly and got into Disney. Um, my role for her, because she was already famous, was to help her get out of Disney. Ah. Think about all the stars that came through Disney and then dropped off the face of the and, earth. And, and then there's like the Zac Efron. Well, how do you? How do I help her become the Zac Efron that's not going to get stuck in the Disney circle and then and then fall off? And, right. it, and it was a dedication to work and to to craft and to understand. Okay, this, this, and this. But where did that? Where did that confidence come from? It came from hundreds and thousands of hours of dance and she, and she danced with like Justin Timberlake on different things or whatever so she had she had put in time just in a different arena she didn't just mm-hmm. show up and and get a show like yes she didn't have a ton of acting training but Disney didn't need that Disney needed charisma right. and needed somebody right. like whatever and she had the confidence from other things and it translated over I mean mm-hmm. she she eats like unbelievable you know like completely whatever it is, vegan or whatever, like, like in it. And so like, good for her. Like you get that thing. Now, guess what? The reason she's going to continue to be successful is because she's still trying to push herself and going, I'm not okay with where I'm at. And other kids are like, I just want to be on Disney channel. Result, result, result. Right. You know, and those are the, those are the kids and parents who are going to be disappointed because even if they get it, which they probably won't, if that's their goal, but even if they get it, it's going to be like, okay, now what? Well, and I, I deal with so many contestants. I want to be a model. 
Okay. Do you know what that means? Do you know what <laughs> modeling really is? Right. Can you really earn a living being a model? Yeah. If you're one of, you know, these, this very small percentage, but what, what do you mean when you say you want to be a model and nine and a half times out of 10, it's, they want to be wanted or they want to be appreciated for their beauty, which that's okay. You know, we're, we're women, we're made in the beautiful. Or image you, or you want the title God. model. Like you want, you want the status to say I'm a right. model. Right. But you know, I'm a plus size model with Ford. I get one job every two years. Right? I, I'm because a, I'm a model who, who's, who's, you know, model with his shirt off. I mean, I am a, I am a swimsuit model officially. I mean, but I can say I'm, I'm a signed model. I am signed with a reputable agency. That yeah. doesn't mean I get work. And it also doesn't mean that my, my, that my idea of myself is, is tied to that. I could walk away from that in a second. Same with, if I decide I'm done doing pageants, being a pageant director is not my identity. God has so much more for me. I sing worship at Scottsdale Bible. If all of a sudden God took my voice away from me, which he did once, and that's a whole other story. But that's that, that, that's okay because you can't get your identity wrapped around something that has to do with 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 an appearance or with with a with a particular job or a role because you are so much more than that yeah mm -hmm. and that's when you get disappointed i want to be a model i want to be on broadway i want to well now they don't have it anymore i want to be in the victoria's secret fashion show great so does everybody else what are you going to do if you're not in there yeah what's your other goal what's a, what's a more intermediate an intermediate goal i mean i'm i'm unusual in that okay i'm gonna get back into musical theater boom here's a dream role lead there you go oh, okay, now what? Well, now I audition for other stuff and I don't get callbacks and that's fine because I'm not right for the role and that's cool. But yeah, you can't just say, I wanna be a model, I wanna be a dancer, I wanna be a star. There's so many people who are unhappy and on drugs and commit suicide that are stars. And I think it's because, well, I, I think a lot of it is because they don't have a, a really grounded faith um, and that's heartbreaking and, and sad to see people in such emotional turmoil, but you cannot tie your happiness in, based on what other people think of you. 100% agree. Uh, I like to say just like with identity, not wrapping it in circumstance, you know? Yeah. Like, like just can't be. No, I, I yeah, honestly, right. you'll be know, the most, just... you'll be the most unhappy person on the planet. I mean, here, I hate this phrase. I hate it. Oh, but it works. It's, it's like, it is what it is, but you can be the ripest, juiciest peach in the world. And there will be people who hate peaches. Yeah. So just well, be and, and if you're smart. hate, if you're hated, you earned it, you know, usually <laughs> <laughs> I always say, guys, we get, we have to earn our hate mail because if, <laughs> if we're not, you know, if we're not getting a couple negative comments, we're not big enough. Well, yeah. Look at look at how, how every time Jamie does a like preaches, there's always a moment like I know I'm gonna get an email about this later. Right now, don't right, send like... an email. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, I know. I mean, I think I wore these really fabulous red suede boots that I that I had to sing. I'm like, well, Derek, hope y'all don't get emails when you're wearing these boots. <laughs> and they did. When they, I'm singing they worship. Did. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we gotta have to wrap here. But if you want to uh, learn more about Brit, which I know you do, you can go to her YouTube. You can find her on Facebook at, at Brit Powell. Instagram is at Brit D A R A Powell. Twitter Dara, is at yes. what is it? Dara. Is oh, Dara. Name. Brit Dara Powell. Okay, good. Twitter is Brit Dara, uh, and then the website is www.missarizonausa.com. That's www.missarizonausa.com. She's got an e-course coming out at the end of July. Very excited for that. You can learn all about pageantry there. If you are thinking about pageantry, if you had that little tickle in your heart or in your head, or you, maybe you didn't think about it till just now, great. Give Britt a call. Worst case scenario, you get to hang out with this wonderful human being for a while, and she will help inspire you and put you on a good confidence path so that when you are 50, you can be rocking it the way she is, doing full body picks 
and being like, no, I don't, I, I, no apologies, baby. Um, no apologies. All right. So that is our show. Thank you so much. If you, uh, hopefully you, you would like this show and you were inspired by it, we ask that you please uh, subscribe to the channel. That means a whole lot to us because it means a whole lot to YouTube for whatever reason. So please subscribe to the channel, share the channel. We are trying to put out some light driven content and we sure appreciate your help. So this is the best way you can do that. The best way you can support our studio right now is to subscribe to our YouTube, like the channel and share the channel. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Mornings with Matt. God bless. Thanks for listening to Mornings with Matt. Please like, subscribe, and follow us at Deering Acting Studio to keep up with the latest content. For more information on classes, private lessons, or professional development coaching, visit www.deeringstudio.com. Have a Deering day, everyone.